All right, we're gonna do a video on how I do power weapons. So what we've done is we've primed a model and then we've base coated our power weapon in white. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some coarse steel wool and we're going to overlay it on the power weapon. And what we wanna do is get some of those pieces of steel wool right up against the blade, but also we want um, a lot of it to interfere with the spray because what we want to do is kind of create a dispersion effect on our blade. So we want to find that good kind of location in here, and it's all really mostly guesswork. You can see where I've done it the most. And find that location and then kind of call it yeah, right about there. I like to angle it a little bit it a little bit more lively effect rather than just straight lines across. And now we've got our airbrush with just black, just pure black in there. And we're going to do a coat and then we're going to just throw air through it to dry the layer. Another coat and then air. The key is we don't want to get any overspray and blur our nice crisp lines. One more coat should do it. All right, and now we should have created, all right, a cool little power effect there. We'll refine the black here a little bit. Just gently there at the bottom. Gently refining some of these shadows. All right, and so now you can see that neat little effect. All right, now we're gonna do the other side. Get some cool locations right here. All right, nice layer, then just air. Make sure it's totally dry. Another layer. Make sure it's totally dry. It's just going air through it. You can also use a hair dryer in this stage. I'm just being lazy. I don't feel like reaching down for it. And one final layer. Just air. Make sure it's dry. And one last layer. Just for good measure. And there. Got another cool layer. We'll refine this again a little towards the bottom. Got a little sloppy there, that's alright. Alright, that one's not quite as awesome, but still pretty good. And what we'll do is, you know, we got nice, really sharp lines here, not as many on this side. And what you can do is come back in with a brush with just white on it and refine it. And I'll show you that here right now. So we get a little bit of white. Where's a good white? Uh, looks like I don't really have a white here. So let's do just some of our Medea Comart white. And again, I would not recommend using this with a brush usually because it's far too thin. But get a nice brush with a sharp point. I like uh, Windsor Newtons. And then we'll get just a little bit of that white on the tip of our brush. Get rid of the excess moisture here. And again, I'm being lazy. I'm not using a wet palette or anything. But then we'll come back in and then we'll just add some lines in here. Just refine this a little bit. And again, we kind of want to find that darkest point to do this against because it'll stand out the most. It's just a nice little line here. Here we go. And if you want to get a little cheeky, you can, you know, add some little power effects, little dots. 
kind of sparking up the blade. Like that. Oop. Yeah, you can see those little dots that I added there. And then we'll go ahead and just quickly, gently edge highlight the blade. And again, you'll see why we do this here in a sec. We kind of got that nice dispersed edge there. Let's actually go ahead and darken up that edge of this here just a touch. There we go. And we'll do just a hair right there. All right. And you'll see why that's important here in a second. And I'll do it one more time on, on this guy. And then I'll pause and I'll come back for the next step. But so you can see it on a slightly larger weapon. All right, here we have it on this power sword. This Space Hulk Terminator bro that I found in my bits. And I was like, well, hey, you look cool. Let's paint you up. All right, so... Again, just throw in air now, make sure it's completely dry. There's another layer. Make sure it's completely dry. And one last layer. Make sure it's completely dry. And all right, you can see that really cool effect there. Looks like we can darken up down here. Right there, yeah, and that, that'll be a really cool place to refine that line. So I'll do that here in a sec. So let's do this one more time. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a struggle, but there we go. All right. First layer on. And the key is spraying from the same angle over and over. You saw I turned the blade there, but then I turned it back. So as I not to uh, turn it, so it would, you know, potentially really ruin these lines that we've made. And one more coat. Right. So we can always come back in and refine it a little bit. And let's see what we've got here. Oh yeah, that looks really good. And yeah, we don't even really need to darken that up at all. Okay. And so now, so I told you about that little area right there, we can refine. So let's grab our, our brush. here. Let's get just a little bit on there. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to connect this. A nice thin line. And I hear that my buddy just woke up from his nap. So it looks like this tutorial is going to be paused a little bit, but you see there we just refined it. And then maybe add a couple little little power sparks right here. There we go. And uh, don't really need any right there. All right, so that's how we do it. And then I'm gonna come back here in a second and show you how we finish it up. All right, so we've got three power weapons that are ready to go. And this is my my favorite part. And so what we've done is we've taken some, a candy coat, which is like a translucent paint. And my favorite is, for this particular purpose, is Badger, Badger Miniatare Ghost Tent Plasma. And what this will do is that this is, a, like, like I said, a translucent paint. And so it'll, it'll tint 
what we have without just being an, a, a color. And I'll show you what I mean. And so the key is, is again, thin layers. So we take what we've got, our neat looking power sword, and then we just hit it with the layer and then some air to, to keep it dry. But you see how it's already getting that blue tint. And there's a lot of different colors you can use, but against the red of Blood Angel's armor, I think that this looks super cool. And you can already see that it's really starting to, to come out. All you need is a few layers, and you can see this really, really cool effect. And again, you can use a hairdryer here instead of just running air through the airbrush and just being lazy. But now you can see how that contrast we built up with just the red, or the white and the black turned into this really cool effect when you add this candy coat to it. So, there's one cool looking power sword pretty darn quickly. Alright, so now let's hit the spear. Do the same thing. Hitting it with the air so we're not getting too much, <coughs> excuse me, getting any spillage on it. Getting excess paint, it's globbing up in there. We got a little bit there on the edge, that's okay. Yeah, a really cool effect really quickly and easily and once we have these guys painted up it'll look great against the red and then here we go for this librarian who I decided to paint mostly because I found out this was actually Mephiston before he was Mephiston um, Calisarius, I think, which I think is pretty stinking cool. I did not realize that he was the librarian from the Space Hulk box set, which I happen to have the, uh, the, the Blood Angels models for just lying around. And when I found out that this was, you know, Mephiston's earlier self, I was like, well, he needs a paint job then. So here we are, and again, being lazy, just kind of blocking that flow with my thumb there. I got a little bit of the ghost tent on the arm, so I'll have to go back and refine that later, but not too big a deal. Dab up the XX with my thumb there. And there you have it. Another really cool looking power blade. Really quickly, really effectively, and I think it creates a really unique look. It's easy to replicate. So, hope you enjoy.